Good morning and welcome to our UBC Learning Circle, Jordan's Principal and Information Session with Raylene and Vanessa. Today's conversation is presented in partnership with the Center for Excellence in Indigenous Health. We'd like to thank the First Nations Health Authority for generously funding the UBC Learning Circle and allowing us to have these conversations. Before we formally begin, I'd like to acknowledge with respect and gratitude that I'm joining you from the unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh Nations. Please feel free to introduce yourself and the, and the nation you're calling in from in the chat box below. Today's learning circle will be exploring Jordan's principal information session with Raylene and Vanessa, and I'll ask you, the panelists, to introduce themselves in just a few moments. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Serene Squawkin. I'm the new learning circle manager. I'll be the moderator for today's uh, discussion. Joining us uh, today, working behind the scenes, is Cynthia, our production coordinator. She'll be in the background interacting with everyone in the chat. And finally, before we get into today's discussion, I will just provide a gentle heads up that the topics covered may be sensitive or emotionally triggering. So please make sure that you are looking after yourself. And if at any point you feel that you need to talk to a friend, elder, counselor, or family member, don't hesitate to do so. We have some prompts in the chat for you if you need additional support. Now I'll turn it over to the panelists to introduce themselves. Good morning, everybody. My name is Ravi McGrath. I am calling in from the uh, I am the Jordan's Principal Service Coordinator at the BC Aboriginal Network on Disability Society, also known as BCANS. I will be doing this information session on Jordan's Principal. I have a guest also with us who will be able to help with any questions. Um, her name is Vanessa. I'll allow her to introduce herself right now before we jump in. Thank you, Raylene. Um, my name is Vanessa Sabatova. Uh, I'm calling in from the unceded and traditional territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh people. Uh, I am a senior policy researcher for Indigenous Services Canada uh, and happy to be here to help with the Q&A uh, and to support Raylene. Thank you so much. Awesome, thank you so much, Vanessa. Uh, again, I just before we get started, I want to acknowledge the Coast Salish and Lekwungen people of, of our lands, allowing me to live, love, and learn here. Um, and I also want to take the time to acknowledge Serene and Cynthia for having me here do this presentation and share this valuable information with you all. And so, Thank you again for all coming in. And before we actually get started, I want to start the information session with a brief show of a documentary around Jordan River Anderson himself. So if we could just focus our eyes for the first few minutes of this film, uh, that would be great to that. And we will, um, unfortunately, we won't be have the time to share the entire documentary, but please do take time of your own to search it. Uh, again, it's called The Messenger, Jordan River Anderson, and you can find that documentary on YouTube. Uh, it's also on Amazon Prime. Um, you can find it for free online anywhere else. But um, again, here we go, and we'll just start the, start the documentary here. Thank you. Here we are in Kinosau CP, Norway House, Manitoba, a Cree community of 8,000 people, located more than 800 kilometers north of Winnipeg in Canada. This is where the Anderson family lives.
When Virginia Anderson was pregnant with Jordan, she had complications and had to be flown to Winnipeg to give birth. This is why Jordan ended up so far away from home, in the children's hospital, where he lived for such a long time. Oh, there's that guitar, Jordan. Isn't that nice? Oh, I think he really likes that, Marcy. He must get that from his dad. Yeah. Got another guitar player here. I think so. Well, Jordan, he couldn't talk, he never spoke, no. he never cried, he didn't have any tears. <laughs> and he had clapped feet, yeah. he had to feed him to the stomach. So many difficulties. So by practicing with Jordan, Shanna is teaching him what it feels like to stand yeah. up and to sit down. Get up, buddy. Get up so he's jump. getting the practice. Get up, Push back. Good job holding your head up, Jordan. To explain to us, Jordan was born with a rare syndrome. There was only eight cases known since the dawn of time. <laughs> that a boy. Good standing. Head up two feet down. Because of the conditions that Jordan was born with, he um, there were some things about him that were different than other kids. Uh, a big one was uh, that his face wasn't able to move. His face was like, paralyzed in a way. Most of the time with babies, you get a lot of reaction from them. With Jordan, you just got a lot subtler reaction. Uh, there he goes. Look at those elbows. Look at those arms. Good job. Good job. Jordan, you did it. Hooray. Nice work. You worked hard, Jordan. Good for you. Good for you, Jordan. Jordan was ventilator dependent his whole life. He had a tracheostomy, so he, he breathed through his through a hole in his neck that was connected to the equipment. When children are, are ventilator dependent, they're not able to make noise in the same way because the air is no longer going over the vocal cords. So you just have to be attentive in different ways. I remember his dark, full head of hair. <laughs> I remember him very clearly in my mind. I got to work with him for the entire duration that he was here. And there was an instrument he used to love to strum. It's got a little silver strip, and all it takes is to go back and forth, and it's very touch sensitive. See how hard Jordan is working? Alright. Good job, Jordan. He liked to sweep his hand back and forth, and it would make it sound like a piano going up and down a piano. They're learning, you know, that their hand is playing that so that they can be more responsive in the session. What's neat is we get to work within a team. So I would also work with the physiotherapist and whether she would be working on helping support him to sit or to roll on his side. I could be doing music across from him to just keep him engaged and to try to improve the quality of life that they're having here. Each of them work like these therapists. There's so, there were so many. I'm happy to see that. I'm first very impressed. I watched them work. I, I learned from them too. 
really helpful. I'm thankful for them. Can we do rock a bye? Rock a bye, Jordan. On the treetop. When the wind blows, that cradle will rock and rock and rock. Ah. I was more or less raising up my children here. I let my late wife, she wanted to look after him. Here comes Virginia, Jordan's mom. She'll be going for months at a time. Then she'll come home for a week and she'll go back. And there's Mary Jane. It's more or less, more or less that's how it happened. Here's Grandma and Grandpa. To Mary Jane, Mom and Dad to Jordan. Hey, oh, it's kissing. Kiss Kissing people is like one of those things, isn't it? Ah, what's your yeah, I remember my baby was two year old. My little girl, eh? I was two year old when Jordan was born. She was still in Pampers, eh? So I had to body train her and all that. It was hard because they wanted their mom. My two-year-old and my four-year-old and my six-year-old, they would cry for their mom. I cried with them. <laughs> I'm not ashamed to say that because I really did cry with them, especially at night when they wanted their mom beside. Yeah. The doctors had informed us that he he needed to be near um, a ho hospital at all times, even if he got well enough to move into a foster home, he would have to be near the hospital. In 2002, a medical foster home was located in Winnipeg, but certain things needed to be done in the home to make it wheelchair accessible and to lift Jordan in and out of bed, to the bathroom, etc. That foster home was found but the wrangling between the provincial and federal departments began because they could not decide which department would pay for what. It was very disheartening and disillusioning that the two levels of government could not come to an agreement at that table of a payment for Jordan so he could leave the hospital and he never did leave the hospital. Uh, he had um, actually gone into a coma and he passed away in 2005. Hi, Jordan. Are you looking at your book? The medical staff were just so wonderful with him. They had it set up so warm, but they knew that Jordan deserved the opportunity to live in a home. Christian, it's Christian. Look at how Jordan's opening his mouth. You can open your mouth really wide. If he had been a provincial child, same situation, if he had been deemed a provincial responsibility here in Manitoba, he would have been released, no questions asked, and the entire per diem would have been covered. But it was because of his Indian status, federal responsibility, that he never had that opportunity. I had raised the issue with a colleague of mine in Ottawa, Cindy Blackstock, and the profile was raised in regard to this injustice. Cindy met with me and talked about uh, Jordan River Anderson and about the plight of uh, Aboriginal children across this country. And working with Cindy, we developed a motion uh, to be presented in the House of Commons. So Cindy was really my first point of contact. The question is the following one. Ms. Crowder, seconded by Ms. Wazalisi Lees, moved that in the opinion of the House, the government should immediately adopt a child first principle based on Jordan's principle to resolve jurisdictional disputes involving the care of First Nations children. Yes, pour 262, nays contre aucun, none. Je déclare la motion adoptée. We were pretty sure it was going to pass with everybody in the house because we'd done the work ahead of time, making sure we told people what it was about and giving them background information. But I, I think the thing that was the biggest 
had the biggest impact on me was all of the children. Um, families bought their children. And they were in the gallery when the vote happened. And you had these families whose voices were not being heard. They saw members of parliament vote yes, that children mattered, right? And for me, that was the moment, you know, knowing that families were seeing this and hearing this, that their kids were there. It was amazing. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll stop the film George. here. Thank you all for taking that time to acknowledge the film of The Messenger, Jordan River Anderson. I just wanted to first play the initial moments, beginning moments of that film. Uh, there is much more to continue if you do have the time. I do recommend that we um, you take the time to sit and watch that emotional and powerful movie, uh, film documentary by Alanis Obosa, Obosawin. Um, but for now, let's carry on with the Jordan's principal presentation and I will hopefully share all this valuable information to you all. And Cynthia, if we can start, that'd be great. So please do note that the information in this presentation deck uh, is subject to change um, based on the Canadian Human Rights Tribunal orders and agreements between government and Canada parties to complain of, to the CHRT. Uh, next slide. Okay, so as we all saw, this is young Jordan. He was, his name Jordan River Anderson. Uh, the Jordan's principal was named in memory of Jordan and he was born October 22nd, 1999 uh, to First Nations family and he would belong to the Norway House Cree Nation in Manitoba. Uh, young Jordan was born with complex medical needs and was taken care of and treated at the Winnipeg Hospital for over two years. When Jordan was two years old, the doctors told what every parent and guardian wishes to hear, that he could be released from the hospital and stay in a specialized home that would be modified to his exact needs, his medical needs and health care and his care is well taken care of. Um, as you heard in the film as well, he did need to stay in a home that was close to the hospital. And so, so that he could get the treatment he needed as soon as possible when he needed. Um, so um, Jordan, he suffered from a rare muscle disorder known as the Carey Feynman syndrome. And unfortunately, in 2005, Jordan River passed away in the hospital at the age of five before the federal and provincial governments could agree on who should pay for his, him, his in-home care at the medical foster home. And as a result of the funding dispute, Jordan was never able to return to his family home or his family community. He never got to spend a day outside of the hospital nor with his family and inside their home and on their home reservation. Uh, Jordan's principal came to be after that, after this tragic story of Jordan River Anderson. Next slide, please. So what is Jordan's principal? So after Jordan's tragic death, this sparked a movement to make it clear that no other First Nation child was treated as Jordan had been treated. And according to the First Nations Caring Society, the House of Commons, as we saw, voted unanimously to adopt Jordan's principle, addressing the needs of First Nations children on December 12th, 2007. And Jordan's principle has evolved significantly since his family has gifted his name to the creation of the Child First Principle to ensure First Nations children could access the services they need without denial, delay, or disruption. Uh, there have been a number of subsequent rulings since the initial order, ranging from orders to compensate children impacted by discriminatory children welfare system, expanding eligibility and definition of a First Nations child, 
and funding on the actual costs of capital projects to support the delivery of First Nations child families and services and Jordan's principal. Next slide. So Jordan's principal is a child's first principal, making sure all First Nations children living on and off reserve in Canada can access the products, services, and supports they need when they need them. Jordan's principal is a legal obligation. It is not a government policy nor a program, and Jordan's principal is a legal rule. Therefore, it has no end date to Jordan's principal itself. That Child First Initiative. That is a picture of Jordan and his lovely mother, Virginia, at the top there, in case you all were wondering. And uh, next slide, please. So Jordan's principal, again, is a federal initiative that provides funding to First Nations children and youth in Canada to access the products, services, and supports they need when they need them, regardless whether they live on or off reserve, living in urban communities. Funding can help with a wide range of health, social, and educational needs. And it ensures that there are no gaps, delays, or disruptions. The normative government services for First Nations children i.e. the government services that are typically available for children in BC. So Jordan's principal is open to all First Nations children, youth, ages 0 to 19, on reserve, and those who live in urban settings with an identified need. It applies to all government services for Jordan for, sorry, it applies to all government services for First Nations children, depending on each child's need. And there are, again, a wide range of health, education, social and cultural services and supports that may be able to support a child based, a child based on their specific needs. This ensures that there are no gaps, delays and disruptions. And normative services, I want to touch base on this, are a suit of publicly available programs, products and services that are typically available to all children in BC. Normative standard is the absolute minimum floor, not the ceiling, maximum funding. The next slide. Uh, Jordan's principal recognizes the First Nations children may need government services that exceed the normative standard uh, to ensure substantive equality the provision of services to the child, to ensure cultural appropriate services to the child and or to safeguard the best interests of the child. When the government service is available to all other children, the government department is, the government department of first contact will pay the services to a First Nations child without engaging in administrative case conferencing, policy review, service navigation, or any other similar administrative procedure before recommending service is provided, is approved and funding is provided. Sorry. I just wanna to touch base um, in, a, in, a, uh, in addition to addressing the gaps, delays, and disruptions, Drones Principal recognized that First Nations children may require government services that are not typically available to all children in BC in order to ensure substantive equality. Uh, next, next slide, please. So eligibility. So a child or youth under the age of majority in their province or territory of residence, they, um, they should permanently reside in Canada and they need to just meet one of the following criteria. They are registered or eligible to be registered under the Indian Act. They have one parent or guardian who is registered or also eligible to be registered under the Indian Act. The child is recognized by their nation for the purposes of Jordan's principle or is ordinarily resident on reserve. 
Um, Métis children who are ordinarily resident on reserve are recognized by First Nation are also eligible. For Inuit children, please refer to the Inuit Child First Initiative for uh, further elaboration on that. And a child is defined as an individual who is under the age of majority within their province or territory in BC, their age of majority, which is 19. Your child does not have to have a disability to be eligible for Jordan's principle. Again, they need to have one of the MEC uh, criteria above, whether they're registered or eligible to be registered, a parent or guardian is eligible to be registered or is registered, again, um, recognized by their nation or they are ordinarily a resident on reserve. And just one moment, so sorry. I just want to touch base one more thing here. Uh, there are many reasons why a child or parent may not be registered as a First Nations, despite being eligible to, to register. Uh, in cases where the parent or guardian is eligible but is not registered or received confirmation of status, the parent or guardian should provide as much information as possible, including their full name, their date of birth, and the full name and date of birth of their own First Nations parents, grandparents of the child for whom the request is being made for. And again, currently Métis children are eligible for Jordan's principal if they meet one of the following criteria. Have a parent or guardian who is registered or eligible to be registered under the Indian Act. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, they are, if a Métis is recognized by a nation for the purposes of Jordan's principle and is ordinarily resident on reserve. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so the main goal to ensure that there are no gaps in publicly funded provincial and federal services of First Nations children. Jordan's principle is a child first principle that provides access to products, services without delays, denials, or disruptions. The Inuit Child First Initiative ensures that Inuit children have access to the essential government funded health, social and educational products, services and supports they need when they need them. Jordan's principle is a gift from the Anderson family in Jordan's memory. Shortening Jordan's principle to an acronym such as JP, which we hear a lot of, um, it reduces it to a level of government policy program or technical term and dehumanizes Jordan's legacy. So if we can, please do recognize Jordan's principle as is the full name, Jordan's principal. In honor of Jordan and his family, please do not shorten Jordan's principal to the acronym JP. Please use it as its full name. Thank you. Next slide, please. So who can send requests? So requests for individual or group requests can be submitted by a parent or a guardian of the First Nation child or youth, uh, the First Nations youth, um, age of consent, which is 16 in BC, or an authorized representative, such as a service coordinator, such as myself, a case manager, a school counselor, just as long as the person is familiar with the Jordan's principal request process. Um, if there are any, ever any questions or concerns, please do reach out to a service coordinator available closest to you and we will be able to assist um, with gathering the documentation or connecting you with a, a nearer service coordinator or directing you direct, um, specifically to Indigenous Services Canada, who may have more answers to your questions. And so 
one main thing that needs to be done when submitting a drones principal request is a consent form must be signed and completed by someone to act on behalf of the requester. So before I can send a request, I do need consent written or verbalized from the parent or guardian of the First Nations child before I can submit any applications. Um, next, next slide. Well, who to contact? So available, there are BC Jordan's principal service coordinators located throughout BC. I want to note that our Jordan's principal hub website, it's an enhanced service coordination hub for BC and it, it locates um, us service coordinators throughout BC and the closest one to your location. Um, there are service coordinators such as myself who are, who are provincial wide so I can have a client no matter your location in BC. Our BC service coordinators will assess the needs of the child with the requester. We will help remove the stress off the family as best that we can to take on gathering all the documentation required once, once the, um, the authorized representation documentation is, is filed and completed. So once a consent form is given to us and signed, we are able to sign off on things and reach out for services on your behalf. And we do our best in connecting the child and family to the needed services and supports. We also do have the Indigenous Service Canada, the Jordan's Principal BC. There is the BC Region Duty Phone um, available on the site here. Uh, it is monitored during business hours of Monday to Friday, 8 to 4, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, we do have, there is the general inbox if you have any questions towards Jordan's principal. And all this information is available on the Indigenous Services Canada website. If you ever have any questions, um, their emails are available. No matter your location of Canada, there's uh, available vocal points and people to take on your calls and questions if you ever have anything that you need to throw out to the world to us. And uh, there's the payments. Uh, also, there is the National Jordan's Principal Call Center. This call center is available 24 hours, seven days a week. So you can call at any time and hopefully, and somebody will pick up the line to help you guide, help guide you in the right direction to support you and your child's need. I will just read off the phone number here. Sorry, just one moment. The phone number is 1-855-572-4453. That is the 1-800 um, call center line for Jordan's Principal Call Center that is available 24 hours, seven days a week. And do, again, um, reach out to any service coordinators available at the Jordan's Principal Hub BC.ca website. It is our Jordan's Principal Enhanced Service Coordination Hub for BC. Uh, we have, again, service coordinators located throughout, and we are more than, well, more than willing to take on any questions and answer them with the best of, that we can, best of our abilities. And next slide, please. So eligible fund for funding options. Again, there are a wide range of health, educational, social, and cultural availabilities. For example, under health, um, eligible funding options would be wheelchair ramps, um, medical, mental health services, um, assessments, uh, medical supplies and equipment. These are just, again, just some of the eligible funding options. There can be more. 
again, just reach out to a service coordinator or Indigenous Services Canada and we'll be able to guide you and gather the documentation needed. Um, under education, uh, things such as the psychoeducational assessments have been funded before. Speech and language therapy have been funded before. Under social, um, daycare services, respite services. Uh, we have also had special hearing aids, um, eyewear, uh, again, assessments and screening, assistive technology and electronics. It really depends on your child's need and we do the best that we can to support you. Under the cultural, we have attending cultural events if the child wants to get more in touch with their ancestral and traditional First Nations communities, uh, cultural activities, land-based camps. So there, there are many avenues that can be um, applied for and researched. There are no guarantees once an application goes out, but us service coordinators do our best to support you and gathering all the documentation, submitting their requests. Um, if unfortunately the family and I, we do get denials, there are opportunities for appeal within one year of the receiving the denial of the application itself. And yes, yeah, so like I said, these are only some examples of funding that Jordan Principal provides. Uh, Jordan's Principal is a child specific initiative and all requests are viewed on a case by case basis. So this is a non exhaustive exhaustive list of supports that have been funded by Jordan's principal itself, along with orthodontic treatment, um, dental coverage that First Nations Health Authority can only pay small portions of. Um, we can try apply for extra funding for this. Um, like I, I said, eyewear, there's many other avenues we can look into. Um, all right, let's move on to the next slide, please. Okay, so the next steps when submitting an application. Once all the supportive and required documentation is gathered, it will be sent to Indigenous Services Canada for review. So again, once it, we gather all the correct documentation, the signed consent form by the parent, the eligible information, eligibility information on our Jordan's principal request and a letter of recommendation. Um, we'll go to the next slide and it details exactly what we all need and I'll go into that further here. So next slide, thank you, thank you. So um, the main, one of the main things we will need is the Jordan's Principal Request Form itself. Uh, the form can be downloaded from the Jordan's Principal website or requested from the BC Region team. This form will be used to indicate the consent and elig eligibility. Uh, another document would be the consent form, either wit written or oral from the child's parent guardian or from the youth if they are legally able to make decisions regarding their care. So 16 or older in BC. Their eligibility, uh, information concerning el eligibility for the Jordan's principal and a letter of recommendation. So the letter of recommendation um, for the requested item or items on from a licensed or registered professional who is involved in the child's care or a community authorized elder or knowledge keeper for request, requests related to culture, language or mental, spiritual, emotional wellness supports. Sorry, I am stumbling on some of my words. Bear with me here. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, when, Wherever possible, the letter should include the specific support requested and provide information regarding the rec rec recommended frequency and duration of the support requested. 
Um, this is optional, but can be very informative when submitting a request, uh, is the costing information. So a quote or an estimate of the cost of the product, service, or support requested if, if it's available. And then we submit um, all documentation as one. We submit it as a one PDF document and submit it to the Jordan's principal uh, general email here, which is provided there. Again, uh, this email is provided on the Indigenous Services Canada website under Jordan's principal. Um, all that information is available as well as their phone numbers and who to contact at Indigenous Services Canada. Okay, um, next slide, please. Okay, the timeline. So a Jordan's principal request is never, is not officially complete unless all required documentation has been received by Indigenous Services Canada. There are two types of requests. Um, the individual request, which is a request for a child or children in the same family or within with the same guardian. There's the urgent request, which decisions should be made within 12 hours. And an urgent request is a ch the child's immediate health or safety, is when the child's immediate health or safety is a concern. Um, when non-urgent decisions should be made within 48 hours, and again, urgent decisions should be made within 12 hours. Uh, in urgent cases, crisis intervention will come first and documentation comes second. This means that urgent requests can be determined before all the documentation is submitted. ISC only needs a minimum amount of, of information to adjudicate an urgent request. Confirmation of el eligibility, verbal or written consent from the parent, guardian, or young person legally available to make decisions about their care, and if possible, a verbal or other confirmation of the service needed need by a professional. It is important though, not to create a barrier to a child receiving urgent support. Um, if non-urgent, the request, and if a non-urgent request may become urgent all of a sudden at some point throughout the preceding period, um, if this happens, ISC will need to be informed immediately. And again, so those are individual requests. And then there are group requests. So requests for a group of children from multiple families or guardians. Again, urgent cases, decisions should be made within 12 hours. And non-urgent cases, decisions should be made within seven days. Um, next slide, please. The key Canadian Human Rights Tribunal rules. So Jordan's principle has evolved, has evolved significantly since his family gifted his name to the creation of the Child First principle to ensure First Nations children could access the services they need without denial, delay, or disruption. Uh, back in 2016, CH, CHRT2, the Canadian Human Rights Tribunal, CHRT, finds that the Canadian government is discriminating against 165,000 children. The Assembly of First Nations resolves to support the full and proper implementation of Jordan's principle. This was 2016, and Jordan's principal initiative was first unanimously passed back in 2007. Um, in 2020, the CHRT 20 and CHRT 36, CHRT rulings, issue rulings, 
to expand eleg eligibility for Jordan's principal to First Nations children with a parent or guardian who is eligible for status under the Bill S-3 implementation and First Nations children recognized by their nation for the purpose of Jordan's principal. And then in 2002, the agreement in principle, Canada and parties to the CHRT order reached an agreement in principle, which lays a pathway for long-term reform of the First Nations Child and Family Services Program and Jordan's principle. Jordan's principle begins implementation of the back to basics approach and works in plan. So that is when the documentation has changed where we require only the, um, the request form, the Jordan's principal request form, authorization form, and a letter of recommendation from the certified physician or um, certified professional within the child's care. And this had just happened back in this year. Um, this timeline outlines some of the key dates and changes to Jordan's principle over the years since it was implemented. Um, there have been a number of subsequent rulings since the initial order, ranging from orders to compensate children impacted by discriminatory child welfare system, expanding eligibility and definition of the First Nations child, and the funding of the actual costs of capital funded projects to support the delivery of First Nations child and family services to Jordan's principal. Next slide, please. So again, this is our Jordan's principal in hub enhanced service coordination hub. We are also known it as the hub. So in partnership with Indigenous Services Canada, BC Aboriginal Child Care Society, BC Acts, hosts the Jordan's Principal Service Coordination Hub. The hub, uh, it acts as a centralized resource for approximately 40 Jordan's Principal Service Coordinators located in communities throughout across BC and across BC. So this is just a simple screenshot of what our website would look like. And on my on the screen there is the website link to find the, your nearest service coordinator uh, who will be happy to take, take on any, um, any questions and help you guide you and your child to the best answers that we can possibly find for you. And if need be, we will connect with Indigenous Services Canada for any questions that you may have that we can't answer at that time. But we, we work with you and we work with your child and we find you the best of services that will support you um, to the best of our knowledge. Um, yeah, so uh, I'll just read off the website here one last time for you. So that's www.jordansprincipalhubbc.ca. And please and be sure that principal is spelled P-R-I-N-C-I-P-L-E. That is always one of the misconceptions when people research Jordan's principal, it is misspelled. <laughs> um, and service coordinators can help families navigate any challenges they may be facing when submitting a request. Um, yeah, so again, it, at our, uh, our hub coordination hub acts as a centralized resource for service coordinators such as myself working across the province. Um, I, we, we hold communities practice meetings and we communicate with one another on the, on the daily basis. We have, we have meetings constantly discussing what things we can implement and how to help our families in the best way that we can. We do, we do um, collab and try work with one another to help the families with the best that we can. When I come across a stumped question, I go to my team to find extra or other resources. When I have 
reached my final of resource research and have, no, have not come across any answers, I go to our team and we all collab and we find, find the, best, um, the best availability support for this child and family. Um, all right, I will just move this on to the next slide. And we slowly begin to close here, but I just wanna to touch base that, again, I work with the BC Aboriginal Network on Disability Society. Uh, we work with many different agencies throughout BC and Canada. Um, we have different programs within our organization here. I will elaborate a little further on those. Um, if you do have any questions about what programs we have at our organization, please give us a call or send us an email. Um, you can find our, um, you can find everything on our website at the BC bcands.bc.ca. That is our organization's website. Uh, we have other additional programs that we will be able to assist you with if you find that you're maybe eligible for Jordan's principal or if you just want to know what other programs we do have available here. Do not uh, hesitate to give us a call. Um, so as you can see, we have worked with the Ministry of Children and Family Development, MCFD, um, Child Behavior and Development, uh, Provincial Deaf and Hearing, Heart of Hearing Services, uh, First Nations Health Authority is always a big agency we connect with, uh, Children's Oral Health Initiative, the Aboriginal Human Resource Initiative, Indigenous Services Canada, uh, the BC Children's Hospital, Sunny Hill Health Center, uh, the Provincial Health Services Authority, uh, school districts. Um, some, again, some of our programs at BCANS here are nationwide, so Canada wide. And, and then we have other programs that are just within BC itself. Uh, we do also coordinate with BC Health Authorities, the Fraser Northern. Interior, Coastal, and Island Health. We communicate with a lot of people to either help. Um, whether they call us and email us with a client referral um, or just have questions about resources in general to support a family in need. And we do our best to support Indigenous, Indigenous families throughout their, and act on their best interests. Um, again, we have various programs that work within our organization here at Beacons. Um, we have, I'll elaborate on a couple programs, but I won't be able to go into detail on too many of them. If you do have any questions, please give us a call. Um, so I'll just list off a few programs that we do have here at Beacons. Um, one is our Indigenous Disability Case Management Program, and they they assist Indigenous peoples throughout BC, um, whether they are in need of finding a bed, uh, if they are in need of relocating to a new home, if they need to find, if they need to find um, mental health services, um, cultural services, we have disability case managers available to assist you at the best that they can. Again, they do have wait lists, but we, do, we support you with the best that we can. Uh, we also have our Indigenous Disab Registered Disability Savings Plan program, uh, the RDSP. Um, we also have our pers persons with disability. Uh, we have the adjudication program here and our monthly nutritional supplement program, MS MNS program. One program I do wanna elaborate a little on is our Support for Indigenous Students Learning Program. This is a Canada-wide program which helps um, Indigenous families with, um, if the child is enrolled in an educational, uh, going to school, um, and they are in need of, a, of electronic devices such as a laptop, um, so the Indigenous Disability Canada, which is another name of ours at ECANS, um, our support for Indigenous 
Student Learning Program, SISLP, is a time-limited project for Indigenous students across Canada who have limited financial resources, including those students living with disabilities. The SISLP is accepting applications from students of any age enrolled in a formal education, educational institute, whether that's online, remote, or through an on-site learning. Uh, they are to be considered uh, to receive a laptop or other technology equipment supports necessary to assist with their continued education and success. So applications for this program will be accepted on an ongoing basis until March 15th, 2023. And they must be received by BCANS no later than that date. Again, that's March 15th, 2023 for it to be considered. Um, but please do go to our website to find out more about our programs. That is bcans.bc.ca. Um, or give us a call into our office where our staff members will be happy to assist you further. Our office number will is 250-381-7303. And our toll free number is 1 815 5511. I just wanted to be able to share that information as our, um, as our beacons has a lot of available information and workers on site who can further assist you with any questions that you do have. And next slide. So that wraps up my portion of the presentation. I want to thank you all for coming and listening and taking the time to listen to my Jordan's principal spiel. Um, if there are any questions, uh, now would be the time to get them across and out. And I do have a guest here, Vanessa Sabatova, who is more than, well, more than willing to help support me in this and answer any of the questions that our audience here has. So without further ado, please send your questions and we will do our best to answer. Thank you, Vanessa and um, Raylene. I just have the questions here. Um, first question is, how many years did the federal and provincial government argue for who was responsible for paying for Jordan's care from his age of two to five? So for three years? Vanessa? Uh, I can't answer that question. Um, it, they were in conversation about who to pay for care, I believe from the start. Um, so up to the age of five, those conversations were still continuing. Um, and as the film had indicated, and as Raylene had, Raylene had spoken to, um, that was never reached as the final verdict and therefore um, has resulted in what we're known as gifted as Jordan's principle today to make sure this does not happen to any other child or youth. Thank you. Thank you. Next question. How long does it take to process a request for Jordan's principles funding? Um, so I can answer that question, Raylene, if that's okay. Oh, yeah, please um, do. Okay, so uh, as Raylene had said in her slides, uh, individual requests are processed within 48 hours of receiving them, and as well as non-urgent group requests are processed within seven days of receiving uh, the request. Now, processed processing starts once the completed package is received by ISC. So um, in many instances, there are missing pieces to um, the documentation that needs to be provided. So this timeline does begin uh, from once we receive all the information. Um, and as Raylene had spoken to, those are three areas that we're needing is the recommendation uh, letter from a licensed professional. Uh, we're needing the verbal or written consent from the child child's guardian or parent, uh, and then also confirmation of eligibility. Next question. Wondering if you could pr provide some insight into challenges slash barriers for children on slash off reserve to access Jordan's principal. 
uh, insights to challenges. Um, perhaps this may be speaking to not knowing about um, how to access Jordan's principle. Um, and this had actually come up in the chat box um, there as well in conversation with um, some folks who did not know that Jordan's principle wasn't for um, old children and youth um, that have an identified need um, and thought that it might be just for children who have a disability. Um, so I think that misunderstanding and as well as trying to, to access who to, uh, who to support them with their requests uh, makes the process a little bit more um, complicated. Um, I can't speak to necessarily uh, the the, uh, the difficulties for on reserve children versus off reserve. Um, I think that as long as the eligibility criteria is understood um, and that is dictated in the form uh, when it's submitted, uh, then uh, the process uh, should move smoothly from there. Um, wondering if you could provide, oh, sorry, I forgot that question. Um, just to clarify, if a Métis child is recognized by the Métis Nation, are they eligible for Jordan's principle? Um, no, only recognized by a First Nation, not Métis Nation. Yeah. Next question. Um, May I have an email contact for the Jordan's principal staff in BC for further communications? Uh, I can certainly put that in the chat. In fact, I was answering uh, many questions coming in the chat and totally forgot about the Q&A. So questions are coming in from all different avenues, which is great. I just popped it in the chat there as well, too, as a reminder, and also included the BC general inbox as well. I will also include my email um, at the BC Aboriginal Network here, and you guys will be able, to, more than welcome to send me any questions and I'll answer them to the best of my ability. If not, I will reach out for, uh, to my resources and gather that information for you. Thank you, yes. Please reach out to Raylene first um, as she has all the answers and presented <laughs> one of them so wonderfully today. Thank you. Next question is, how is service coordinator defined and who might this include? Uh, so that's a good question. A service coordinator is an employee of First Nations or First Nations agencies who are funded by Indigenous Services Canada for Jordan's principal service coordination. Uh, so they are full-time dedicated uh, employees who help families, children, and youth with the navigation of full range of provincial and federal services, as well as prepare and submit a request for Jordan's principal. There are approximately 40 service coordinators uh, located across BC. And then are there differences between Jordan's principal services in BC versus Alberta? Uh, Jordan's principle ensures that there's no gaps in accessing publicly funded uh, products, services, and supports that are available to all children in any province or in the province. Uh, so the normative standards differ for each province, but the way Jordan's principle um, operates is the same uh, between both provinces. Does Jordan's principle cover childcare costs like daycare? It's very difficult to answer questions in regards to what Jordan's principle can cover and cannot cover. Um, Indigenous Services Canada would never uh, discourage our family or um, uh, authorized representative uh, to submit a request as they are, uh, or are looked at on a case by case basis. So I would encourage to submit a request um, and following the set three levels uh, of eligibility that are, or sorry, the criteria that are required um, and that will be looked at and reviewed uh, on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, does Jordan's principle include um, child and youth mental health services? 
Um, again, it's really hard to say uh, that is a uh, case by case basis as well. Um, and then I saw also in the chat um, separate from this question uh, about breast pumps and if that was included. Um, so again, working with a service coordinator is where this would come into play in terms of um, navigating that request process and as well as seeing about other um, services uh, that are possibly available as well to support in the meantime. Uh, but again, we would never discourage a family from putting together a request um, and seeing if that would be able to be processed based on the information provided. And then next question, who or what cr criteria determines normal um, health, social and educational needs? Um, you are saying you have funded before. So does that mean that each case is, is a case by case basis? Uh, yes, so it, it is very much a case by case basis. So um, Jordan's principle is not a rules based program. We do not have a set criteria um, where we're applying certain rules to every single request. So therefore, that's where that case by case um, answer comes into play. And it's very much the reality of how we're looking at each individual situation as each child is unique and their unmet need uh, is individualized. Um, so that is why it yes, it is a case by case basis. And then is your position ISD funded? Um, sorry, Raylene, if you wanted to speak to that or I can speak to that. Sorry, one more time for that question. Is your position ISC funded? I can't answer that at this time. Okay, <laughs> no, that's fine. Um, so again, this goes back to my definition that I provided above about service coordination. Um, so Raylene plays a very important role in the enhanced service coordination model as she is one of uh, the service coordinators that we have throughout the province that are providing direct fund or direct services for children and families. Um, so the enhanced service coordination model is housed within Indigenous Services Canada, um, but in terms of funding a position. I can't really say that to answer to that question exactly, yeah. but knowing that the enhanced service coordination model itself is a, a BC owned model and it is something that is housed within Indigenous Services Canada. And uh, this question says, do they look at the parents budget to help with funds? Uh, absolutely not. We do not look at the budget uh, of parents or um, if they're making a request, say, for respite care, and we don't ask for information about what job they have or anything like that. Um, that information is not necessary when looking at an individualized request. Um, if the cost of service requested exceeds the initial estimate, how do you secure the additional funds? Is a brand new Jordan's principal application required? That's a very good question. Um, so Raylene, I'm going to jump in here if that's okay. And Please so do. Yeah, this is <laughs> uh, overages, which is what we're speaking about here, uh, will be added as a separate item to an existing case and will be reviewed by a file reviewer. Um, so please contact Jordan's principal BC before uh, beforehand if you're expecting an overage. So um, that's where that um, communication with that email address that was shared in the chat box is very important. Um, and as Raylene had mentioned before, everyone um, who has a process request or a request in process um, has a file number attached and can uh, follow up to see if um, more updates are available or if they have additional information to provide, they can provide that as well. Um, this person says, I have heard of Jordan's principle being referred to when ex uh, exceptions are made when assisting with adults and elders. Is that appropriate? When exceptions are being made when assisting. Um, I guess I'm not sure exactly what the question means there. Jordan's principal is eligible for children up to their 19th birthday. And can a child be helped more than once in a year in different areas? Uh, yes, there are no caps for Jordan's principal. Does Jordan's principal apply uh, up until the 19th birthday? If yes, K 
can it be extended if they need the support beyond their 19th birthday? Uh, so that is a very good question. At this point in time, uh, the answer to that is no, uh, because it is up until the 19th birthday. But with that being said, and with the agreement in principle uh, currently being uh, worked out by the parties uh, in Canada, um, we are looking at a possible extension to that age of majority. Um, so it could go up to 25, 27. We're just unclear at this point in time. But at as of right now, our standard operating procedures are that we are only up to age of majority, which is the 19th birthday of the child. Can families apply for the Vancouver Island Children's Assessment Network to be covered through Jordan's principal? Uh, yes, we would encourage you to apply. Uh, private assessments are commonly seen in Jordan's principal, and it depends if there is a gap. So again, uh, coming back to that individual notice request and really noting what is the unmet need of the child uh, and identifying that gap. Um, if, oh, sorry, in the event of hospitalization due to accident or unforeseen illness, uh, for example, can a person call the George's Principal Helpline in this situation or, and receive help and guidance about what to do next? Uh, yes, so the helpline, as Raylene had said, is open 24-7, uh, and this sounds very much like it would be an urgent request as well, so where there's risk of irremediable harm, uh, requesters should call 911, um, but in this case, if we're talking about specifically access to Jordan's principal, a requester can apply to Jordan's principal for medical support, and it will be reviewed by a case-by-case -case basis. Um, if at any point in time, you have a request into Jordan's principal and the status of the request needs to change to urgent, uh, given the, uh, the uh, status of the child or um, what is happening in the context of um, the need of the child, uh, that update could be made to the file as well. Uh, once a child is approved for being covered for whatever it is they need help with, are they automatically covered yearly or do they need to reapply every year? Um, so Jordan's principle is not uh, for ongoing support. It is a bridge funding to cover a gap. So the duration of covered products and services will be reviewed on a case by case basis. Uh, and I know that becomes frustrating when uh, people hear case by case basis so many times, but um, I, I can only speak to that um, so much that it is a case by case basis that things are uh, being looked at. Uh, and in terms of it being a sustainable program, that's not what Jordan's principle is about. It's about that gap funding. Does Jordan's principle cover the cost of an electric breast pump or the difference if some of the cost is covered by FNHA if this is considered an urgent request for the 12 hour turnaround for time approval? Hmm. Um, this might be a difficult question to answer as it seems to already be covered by FNHA and not sure about the contribution of funding for Jordan's principal and what that would look like. Um, I would encourage if there is a specific request that needs to be put through and the requester is deeming it urgent to put that through. Um, if you'd like to have a conversation about it directly, you can email Raylene or myself and we can have a conversation. Uh, but for any urgent request where a child, or in this case baby, is at risk of immutable harm, um, I would suggest that you put through an urgent request. Uh, if you're looking at just a general request, um, then please do um, submit one and then it'll be uh, looked at and reviewed accordingly. Is there an income threshold or a funding cap per year? Um, uh, if also, if you are Indigenous but not Canadian Indigenous in the United States, that won't qualify you if this is true. Uh, so I can answer that, Raylene, uh, if you'd like. Um, so I guess to answer the first part of that question, there is no um, funding cap 
per year, uh, and there's no income threshold. Um, I'm not sure how to answer the context in regards to uh, American or, or Canadian, um, but knowing that the child is eligible, um, that the three pieces of information has been provided, but a recommendation by a professional, um, that the consent is given, and that the child is eligible, uh, a request can be submitted. We have another breast pump question. Um, the breast pumps does, Ari, does the breast pumps, um, sorry, breast pumps, does the child have to be born before a request could be filed for something like the breast pumps, et cetera, or can it be started before birth? Uh, so that's a very good question. Jordan's principle uh, covers children uh, from first breath to the until uh, their 19th birthday. Um, so in this particular case, no, uh, a request could not be submitted before the child is born. Uh, the only caveat to this is if the parent is not, uh, not at their 19th birthday yet, then yes, a request could be put through. Uh, I'm curious, uh, this person's curious regarding your success rate in staying within the timelines you've suggested by which an application will be reviewed and a decision is made. Uh, the success rate that we have, um, I don't have those statistics with me right in front of me right now. Um, we do acknowledge that there is a backlog, um, but Raylene alluded to the back to basics approach, which has started um, as of this year. Um, so that is centered around the child and reducing administrative burdens. And there's been an 82% reduction in our backlog for requests since that time. Um, so uh, processing in terms of speed of that process uh, has been expedited uh, due to reductions of administrative burden um, on families. And do you have a partnership with Providence Health? Um, in terms of ISC side, and I'll let Raylene speak to her side as well, um, there are working groups uh, with the province and we are in the process of coordinating uh, services with them. Yeah, so we are, or provincial. Yeah, uh, I'd shoot any of these questions towards my educa uh, executive director, uh, Neil Belanger. He is more than willing to answer any of these about our organization for further. Uh, you can be contacted at our phone number of 250-381-7303. And then is there funding to hire a Jordan's principal coordinator in community? Let me answer. Oh, sure. Is there funding to hire a Jordan's principal coordinator in community? Um, so I can that question. Um, the expression of interest for Jordan's principal service coordination has closed. Uh, but with that being said, if there is a specific need in the community, um, and you're speaking from a specific agency, uh, we can have those conversations. But right now, there is no uh, live expression for interest uh, that is currently open to the public. And then is there a place for a guest to learn how to become a towards principal coordinator? Um, that is a, a good question. So at this point in time, there isn't that um, learning mechanism to become a service coordinator. Um, I can't speak for Raylene, but I'm sure she'd be help, uh, happy to answer some questions if you had specific questions about um, the, the trick to the trade of being a service coordinator, mm -hmm. uh, if that is your career path. Um, but in terms of any specific uh, learning mechanism to become a service coordinator, um, that doesn't exist at this point in time. Uh, what kinds of cultural safety mechanisms are built into the application process to support parents through a process? Okay, that is a very good question. Um, so I can speak from ISC's end. Um, Raylene, if you had anything to add from BCN's, you can. Um, so for all ISC staff, we undertake a minimum of 15 hours of cultural competency courses per year. So that's for all staff across our region. Um, so the Jordan's Principal Hub also provides uh, training for service coordinators as well. And we do not ask requesters to share any, any information to support substantive equality. Uh, it is presumed and pro. Uh, pro actively applied in each case. And we respect uh, the vendor of choice model, which means that if a requester is 
requesting to use a specific vendor, uh, that is their choice. And we are not going to prescribe a certain vendor to be used. Uh, and that um, we also take the cultural appropriate care of one consideration when reviewing uh, each individual case. Uh, can a nurse in a hospital make a referral? Yes. As long as the um, person is familiar with the Jordan's principal request process, then yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, Raylene's absolutely right. And sorry, I'll just also add that they need to have consent uh, from the parent or legal guardian to be their authorized representative to submit uh, a, Jordan's, a request to Jordan's principal. Um, so what that would mean is that there is signed authorization uh, that they have been given the consent to share this private information about the child and to act on their behalf. Um, can a Jordan's principal respond? representative go into the nations and have a community dialogue or to piggyback on a meeting and have both a booth? Um, so that is a good question. Um, at this point in time, we were not doing booth um, in-person uh, meet and greet opportunities. Um, but with that being said, we are looking at opening uh, that in-person uh, context up soon, sooner than later. Uh, Jordan's Principal BC staff can um, visit uh, virtually at this point in time and give presentations. Uh, and hopefully sooner than later, we'll be able to have that in-person uh, delivery. Uh, and then recognizing that disconcernment is uh, case by case, when we see children with developmental needs that are not being supported with the educational system, are there options to access Jordan's principal to support the child's support needs in both traditional brick and mortar and independent distributed learning environments? Uh, yes, there is options for that, but again, and I, I know it's frustrating for her to hear this and to be defaulted back to the case by case, but I cannot speak to the individual um, possibility of this without seeing the needs of the child and how this particular funding mechanism would help support um, them, their needs um, as, uh, as indicated in the request. Um, so with that being said, yes, there is possibility for this to uh, happen. For example, educational assistance and things like that are, are also available um, through Jordan's principal, but again, each case is reviewed by uh, a case-by-case -case basis. And can, do you support people on how to fill out application forms? Yes, I am more than willing to help support that and even take on the case for you if ever needed. Uh, just have a couple of signed forms from you and the parent or guardian, and I am more than happy to reach out for any services or contact the dentist's office, First Nations Health Authority on your behalf. But again, I just need consent from the parent or guardian before doing so. How do we increase understanding and capacity within the educational system to utilize the principal to support our students who can benefit from it? Um, that is a very good question. I think it's twofold answer to that. So uh, more outreach is needed on our, our, our end from ISC uh, to be able to support those mechanisms and the understanding of Jordan's principle. Um, I think that more information sharing would lead to further dialogue in terms of teachers, vice principals reaching out to Jordan's principle or connecting with service coordinators directly to get that instant or that immediate support. Um, so there, there's that piece, um, and as well as um, the, the understanding of the eligibility criteria and what is required to put forward a request. I think also as a missing component um, where there's some misunderstandings about what is required to put together a request and the letter of recommendation piece. Uh, but again, that falls back to the, um, the outreach that's needed. Um, so that is definitely something that we're looking at bridging that gap for this particular year ahead. Is there an appeals process if the application is denied that would be reviewed by another assessor? Yes, there is a, an appeals process. Again, 
once the uh, parent or guardian has received the denial, um, as long as it's within the year of receiving that denial, we can put it in an appeals process. I just have uh, two questions left. Do you know if it would speed up the wait time for a psych ed assessments by going through Jordan's principal, perhaps by accessing another provider for the service? The regular wait time is over a year, we have been told. Um, so yes, we, we do understand that there are significant wait times uh, for this particular assessment and as well as others. Um, and if the child has an immediate need that needs to be addressed and the wait time has, uh, has impacted this, um, then by all means submit a Jordan's principal request uh, to be able to see um, what would be able to support the, case of the request uh, and the needs of the child. But again, without seen a particular request, it's hard to say. Uh, and again, we support the vendor of choice model. So if the individual uh, who has put forward the request or the family um, is uh, dependent on one particular vendor, um, it would be up to that vendor to determine their own wait times. Uh, and we would respect that uh, request of the family. Last question. How many children have been helped on average slash year in BC since Jordan's principle was implemented. Has any feedback indicated that it's difficult to access Jordan's principle? Um, so I won't speak to the feedback part. I'll let Raylene speak to that part. Um, but there has been statistics um, or current data that is being drawn up in regards to how uh, the numbers of support that we are currently providing. Um, I don't have those numbers in front of me at this point in time. Uh, but if that's something that you're interested in and would like uh, to have access to, please do feel free to reach out. Uh, in regards to, no, no, <laughs> doing it all right. Uh, in regards to my cases and success rate, I can speak to that I have had both denials and approvals. Um, I won't be able to expand on what cases those are, unfortunately, due to confidentiality purposes. But um, I am more than willing to just support you, uh, support the parent, the guardian, the child, and put the request out there if it is ever required. Um, again, I've, I've received both approvals, more, appro more approvals than denials, I'll say that, but it all, like Vanessa says, goes by case by case basis and nothing is ever guaranteed, but we're more than willing to support you and work with you to put these applications to work. Sorry, we just had one question come in. I'll just ask the last question. Um, will the hub model um, coming into BC from MCFD impact uh, or affect the use of Jordan's principle? Will the hub model affect the use of Jordan's principle? Um, well, yes, it will positively affect it. Um, that is our, our goal. And that is the reason why the hub model is in place. Um, so that conversations like these can occur where the public is connected to a service coordinator immediately and you're able to get contact, able to get that immediate support to put forward a request. And the service coordinators as well are able to um, have that team-based approach where they can connect with one another uh, to support one another in order to best support families uh, and requesters who are su uh, submitting individual or group requests to Jordan's principle. Um, so with that in mind, we are looking at um, how to expand upon the model as well too. Uh, and again, that is based on the data that we're receiving and looking back at uh, year's end. So reflecting on last year and ways to improve and also where we are receiving the most requests uh, to see if um, it makes further sense to increase the number of service coordinators in that specific health region. That was our last questions. Thank you to all our panelists and to everyone for joining us today. And thank you so much, Raylene and Vanessa, for the amazing discussion. It was great to hear about the history of George's principle, um, the application process, uh, the request timelines, and also being able to dive into the Q&A. Um, just before we end the webinar, we'd love to bring your attention to our up and coming webinars. Um, this is our last webinar until the summer. Um, 
leaving a legacy and uplifting the cultural safety uh, with Kathy Olmos and Cherie Mercier on March, oh no, not March, uh, May 24th, 2022 at 10 a.m. Um, please feel free to sign up for our newsletter. The link will be in the chat. All these webinars will be free to sign up for on our website at www.learningcircle.ubc.ca. And thank you everyone for everyone joining us today. We look forward to seeing everyone at the next Learning Circle. Lim Lim, thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you all for coming and listening to the presentation. Thank you, Vanessa, for standing by and being my assistant with the questions and Serain for organizing it all, as well as uh, the wonderful technician in behind it all. Cynthia Long, thank you again. Really appreciate it.